Oh, I can't take it. Ready for percussion with all the rest and the shortcuts and the selection filter and the voices. It's making me go cray cray. But I have an idea. Well, that was a fun beginning, and I do feel like that sometimes writing for percussion. Anyway, welcome, welcome back, Jimmy. I hope everyone's doing well and making great music. So I had a subscriber reach out to me a bit ago about multi-percussion. Is there a different way to do it? So in this video, I'm going to show another way where you can customize percussion parts. But if you're interested in the drum set percussion part and how to customize that with voices, you're going to want to check out this video. By the end of this video, you'll have another way on how to format percussion parts as well as multi-percussion. And I'll talk about some of the benefits. Let's begin. Starting with a blank canvas, I'm gonna just call it multi-perk for this video. So I put that in there and then click next. And then for the instruments, I'm just gonna choose instruments and I have selected all instruments. So I have everything that MuseScore has to offer regards to percussion. All right, concert snare drum, bongos and bells. All right, I think I'll move um, bells up. And then maybe that looks fine for now. We'll click finish. So that is our setup. So right now it looks like a score. We need to make this so it's a solo part. Again, this is so we can avoid voices. What we're gonna do is clean things up. This is very easy. Click on the bar line, drag that down so they're all connected. And now we're gonna get rid of that bracket. But if you do want to add the bracket, you can go ahead under palette F9 and I'll slide the bracket there and double click on the bracket, slide that down if you wanna have that. We never know what's gonna happen in multi-percussion land. That's why we have bells there. We need a treble clef and five lines. Bongos, sometimes we like to write that in two lines. So let's work on that first. Bongos, gonna go ahead and highlight a measure and you're gonna right mouse click, go to staff part properties. We're gonna add two lines. And then the line distance, we're gonna make it a little bit bigger. Click apply, click okay. There you go. Now bells, we're gonna go ahead and drag and drop a treble clef. You can go to F9 and I'll just drag it for now. And then we want five lines, assuming you wanna look at normal uh, notes on a staff. So we're gonna go ahead and click on uh, this case or type in five lines, click apply and okay. Indentation. You can fix this, but you have to make this name shorter. If you go to format and go to style and score, you can go ahead and click on first system indentation, enable, let's see if it fixes it. I don't think it will because it's a long name. It doesn't, you have to switch the name, I believe. What we wanna fix is the distance between this. We wanna make this more of a part. So we're gonna go back to format, go to style, and then go to page. We have it already selected disable, most important part. Make sure you select disable vertification. That is the reason you can get the play that you want between staffs. I'm gonna go ahead and focus on staff distance and then max system distance. Staff distance, you can do that as you will, depending on what you're writing. And then there's another quick tip I'll share in a second. We'll leave it like that for now. Max system distance. We're gonna go ahead and bring that closer up. Click OK. I do want to fix the concert snare drum though. I, I kind of want it aligned correctly. So you're writing, you have stems down and stems up in percussion. So one of the things that saves me is when you go to palette, go to F9, and then we can go ahead and use the spacers when needed. In this case, there might not be a situation, but if you have a part where it's shaker and you have the stems down and then there's a bongo part underneath it, you might need to use a spacer so you can manually move that as you wish. So far, we haven't talked anything about voices or anything. So you've kind of zoned in on what you want for instrument per line. You can focus on that. Another thing that I love about MuseScore is you can just double click on the name of the instrument and this comes up par properties. I just constructed the long name snare drum that way for now. So you can have everything lined up. All right, so here's a percussion part that I'm working on where you have bongos, shaker, concert bass drum, and then marimba. And basically I did the same thing that I mentioned in the video. I just had to use spacers to make sure that we didn't have collisions. Don't have to worry about voicing and I can even do change instrument if I want to. It's all good. Yeah. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this is helpful to you and feel free to leave a comment if you have an idea or another way that you format. I'd like to know what other users do. Until next time, happy music making and please take care. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.